catfish right there. All right, as I mentioned in this video, we are going to talk about how to catch fish even when there's a really tough bite and the barometric pressure is really high. So real quick, if you're new to my channel and you like this video, go ahead and subscribe and leave a comment about you know, either a type of fish that you'd like to see us catch or you know, some techniques that you're curious about so that we can help get you guys the information that you're looking for. And you guys know me, I'm Josh Bendosky, founder of the BendoskyPowerFishing.com and home of the Bendosky Power Fishing subscription box where we put all the different stuff that we use in this box uh, so that you guys have quick and easy access to the exact lures and things like that that we used to catch thousands of fish as you've seen in my YouTube videos if you've watched them. Thousands of fish. It changes every month. New stuff delivered right to your door, especially right now. And, uh, uh, you know, this will date this video a little bit because, you know, we're right in the middle of this whole Corona COVID deal. And I went to uh, Walmart recently and they are completely out of everything. I mean, almost nothing in Walmart fishing wise. At least, the, you know, a week ago when I went there, I had to get, get some stuff for my kids. So anyways, we will send you stuff direct to your door. We have lures, all the different lures. We're building out our, our uh, library, our website, so that you can buy stuff individually as well. Our main product though is the box that comes every month, subscription box, and we just put in all the different cool stuff that we use in all of our videos. And the poles, you know, we sell the poles. If you're looking to get some fishing stuff, some fishing gear, this is an awesome place to get it at. You know, these are the poles that my whole pro team, and you guys are getting to know everybody, and we're working on getting videos out faster. Um, but, you know, we got the whole pro staff. We've got, you know, just a lot of great guys on the pro team, and we're adding new people. And here's something that I was talking about online, and I'm working on getting this dialed in, uh, but a kid's pro team. And so we're going to start adding, uh, you know, a kid's pro team that we want to uh, build out. And we're just super excited about the future and, and what Bendosky Power Fishing can do to help tons and tons of people, you know, sharpen up their fishing skills and, uh, and catch a lot more fish. And so that's what we're all about. Here's the rest of the video. Now, in this video, we went out with a great, a great couple, just a great friends of ours on a out to Utah Lake. And interestingly enough, these folks uh, have never had really great success at Utah Lake. And, but they wanted to give it a try. You know, they've seen a lot of my uh, material and they, they wanted to give Utah Lake a try because it's one of my favorite places to fish. And so when we first got out there, I checked the barometric pressure. And, and actually, I have a whole video on barometric pressure that goes in detail that, of exactly how it works. But just real briefly here, if this is your first video that you've ever seen of mine, or um, if you uh, are not sure what barometric pressure is, barometric pressure is the weight of the atmosphere on the water, okay? Like a lot of times if you hear somebody with a, you know, a bad joint, they can say, oh, it feels like a storm's coming. That's because the barometric pressure is changing. The weight of the atmosphere is changing. Now, with it, when it comes to fish, fish have a little air sac inside of their tummy, and when that pressure starts coming down, getting higher, the pressure is getting higher, but it's more weight. So uh, the, there's, it's, the higher the pressure, the higher the number, that means the more weight the, is, is pressed down on the water. And so what happens is it squeezes that little air sac. It, uh, it kind of squeezes it. That air sac is for buoyancy, so they can put themselves in the water column wherever they want. But it squeezes down on it, and what it does is it almost kind of gives them like a little tummy ache. And so they are not that hungry. They're not, and they're definitely not feeding aggressively. And so, when the barometric pressure is high, you know it's going to be a tough bite, you know it's going to be a slow day, and, and a lot of times if, if the pressure is high, I will try to reschedule uh, a trip. But this was a trip that was planned, and you know we kind of had it all set up to do it, and so we went out anyways. So I'll tell you all about the day here in a minute, before I do, let me jump into the rigs. So I was using the velocity poles. And on both poles this day, I was using the buffet. And so if you're not familiar with, the, with uh, what we call the Bendosky buffet, uh, this one has two because one popped off. I caught a really big catfish later in the day. But it is two hooks, or three hooks, with three different menu items on them. And I'll get into to that in a minute, but let me just talk about the, the actual set of the, the, the rigs. So I was using the velocity poles. You guys know that I've... Uh, uh, gone exclusively to Velocity now. They're the only poles that I use. 
And I've got the Signature Series Medium Light Action Pole that I love. And I've caught catfish on this. I've caught big fish on this pole right here, even though it's medium light action. You just want to make sure, this is more for an advanced fisherman, that uh, you want to make sure that you use a net because it's medium light action. And what's cool about these velocity poles is you can put your pinky, Jared Johnson, the guy who designed these, my friend, uh, pro angler, is you can put your pinky down here and loop it around the split, the split stick. And so that you can feel the bite. So as you're fishing, especially if you're casting, you can, you can keep your pinky just right on that and you can reel and you can cast and you can feel any little tick, right? Because you've got your hands right on the split stick. So this is the medium light action. Bull yeah, this is an awesome pole. They're actually available on my website, bendoskypowerfishing.com. Um, both these poles are, as a matter of fact. And then we have the medium action. Medium action is, is a, you know, a great pole. It's medium action, so you know, even somebody that kind of wants to yank a fish around or you know, really manhandle them. Uh, if you're kind of newer to fishing and you're not, uh, maybe not as careful, or if, you, if you're going to let your kids uh, use this pole and they're not going to be super careful, a medium action pole is a great pole for, uh, for that type of individual because it's stronger and it's, the tips are, are stronger and so they're, they're more durable in that way but they're less sensitive, right? So you get, there's, there's pros and cons and then reasons that we use both of them. But anyway, so this is the, uh, this is the medium action velocity rod and combo. But I use 20 pound braid and I run that to about an 8 foot fluorocarbon leader, okay? Now, in this situation, when I do the buffet, because we catch a lot of catfish and they can break off hooks and things like that, I will do a swivel, if you can see that. I'll run it to a swivel, and then I'll run, you know, about, looks like two feet of fluorocarbon, 15-pound uh, fluorocarbon, because I'm going for cats, and then I will snell on three hooks. And if you don't know how to snell a hook, I think I have a video on it already. I'm almost 100% certain I do. And I'll put it in the description. If not, I'll put it on my list of, uh, of videos to produce soon because um, the, that's the easiest, fastest way to get uh, three hooks onto to one, one main line. And then I use a, a uni knot down here. And the way that I connect my main fluorocarbon up above the swivel to the braid is I do a double uni knot, um, a line to line double uni knot. And I will put a link in the description as well on how to tie a line to line double uni knot so that that's how my poles are set up. So that's what we use 20 pound braid to 15 pound fluorocarbon leader. Um, we use the velocity poles that, uh, that I'm just absolutely thrilled with. They are so phenomenal. And cool enough, uh, we all, I also caught, well, we caught three fish on this uh, that day, the day of the tough bite in this area. I got a, three, a, a triple, a triple up three fish on one cast. I mean, it sat out there for a little bit, but um, for them to get hooked up, three fish. So anyways, I, I do three hooks, okay? One, two, three, and about a foot apart, each of them. And I run, the way that this pole is set up, well anyways, on the three hooks, I try to put three separate menu items. And when I start fishing like this, I always try to do a worm if I'm going to fish Utah Lake and go catfishing. If I'm going to do, I'm going to do a worm. I'm going to do chicken breast, raw chicken breast, and then I'm also going to do on the last one. I will do white bass as soon as I catch a white bass. Sometimes I'll have one in the freezer that I'll take with me. But um, as soon as I catch a white bass, I'll cut it up into about a one inch square. So same thing with the chicken: a one inch square of chicken. A one inch square of white bass and a worm if I have got it or sometimes I'll and then whatever they're hitting I'll do two of and so just so happened this day the worms were doing nothing for us it's just basically nothing the chicken was going really really good and the white bass was going really really good too and so um, that is kind of the setup of the buffet now we started in the morning at Utah Lake and I, there's a place where there's some really big black looking catfish kind of around the point if you head out of Provo and just head south, uh, there's, a, there's some, usually some really good catfishing there. But what, uh, I checked the pressure, and the pressure was high, and I said, okay, you know, uh, you know it's probably going to be a little bit of a tough bite here today, but you know, let's just let's give it a shot. 
and you know, an hour, hour and a half in, not even a bite, not even a nibble. You know, we had four, four pulls out, so uh, one, two, three, four pulls total. Out. I had my two, and then each of them had one. So, anyways, the bite was tough, and you know, they were, we, you know, we were just chatting, getting to know each other better, and. You know, I said, uh, and they said, well, this is pretty much par for us, right, for Utah Lake. We, you know, we very rarely catch any fish here, and, and uh, so, so, you know, it's not a big deal. You know, this is what we're used to. And I thought, man, you know what? This will not do. I have got to take them to my secret spot that you can almost always catch fish. Now, I've gone to this spot a couple of times on these high-pressure days. I've, I've had days like this where the pressure's really high, and I have trolled from the far south side of the lake, Lincoln Beach, with my buddy Ian that you guys know. And we have trolled from Provo Harbor all the way to Lincoln Beach to catch nothing, or maybe one or two fish, I think, that at that time. And then this secret spot is all the way on the north side of the lake, and this lake is humongous. And what, But we made a decision that day, as well as this day, to reel up and not troll anymore and just bomb over to the north side and I'll tell you exactly where it's at here in a minute but um, so that's what happened is I we were sitting there and I just could not uh, we just couldn't get a bite and so I said you know it's not super close and we were on kind of a large boat too um, and I said it's not super close but I said uh, you know if we want to start catching some fish my recommendation is that we reel up and head to the other side of the lake so let me tell you about this secret spot. You guys have seen some videos of it. If you guys have seen my white bass video where I caught over 250 personally, and then as a group we caught over 1,000, that is right at this very spot. So if you go to the north side of the lake, right where Linden Harbor is, and you guys have seen I've made a lot of videos at Linden Harbor, and then American Fork Harbor, and I've made a lot of videos at American Fork Harbor too. So there's two harbors, and right almost exactly in between them, is a where the water treatment facility uh, dumps their cleaned water. It's cleaned, but it has a kind of a weird smell to it. You can tell when you're getting close because the water smells funny. And I also will say that uh, I don't eat the white bass out of this, uh, that I catch close to this area. I, I eat them out of the harbors. If I catch them in the harbors, for sure, because they're far enough away. And white bass, although they're schooling fish, you know, these white bass that are in this area, they kind of stay in that area, so they have a funny smell to them. You can tell if you catch one, you know, at, at either of those harbors, they don't have any of the smell to them. So it's just the ones that live right there. But I do eat the catfish, uh, because catfish kind of come in, and then they eat, and catfish kind of roam the whole lake. I mean, they, they, they kind of, they, they, they cover a lot more ground, where the white bass kind of live in their little, you know, they just live wherever they kind of are. They travel a little bit, but not... They don't go nearly as far. So the ones that live around here, they smell bad, and I do not believe that you should be eating them. <laughs> and I eat a ton of fish out of Utah Lake too, but I don't eat them out of this area. So in between these two harbors, uh, you'll see, and if you get closer you can smell it, but you'll see kind of a little concrete, uh, there's a little concrete thing, and then the, a lot of times there's water coming, so there's a concrete thing. And then you'll see a little stream going back too, just off to the left, um, when you're looking at the concrete thing. So it's right in between those two harbors, you're looking for that concrete thing. It's pretty shallow water, so you can't get too close with a boat. But, you know, every single time that we're having a really tough day, if we have a boat, we will go to this spot because we know we'll be able to catch fish. Guaranteed. Almost, almost 100. I've never, I've never not caught fish at this place. Even though I've, I've had tough bite all day long, like literally like one fish or something like it, trolling the whole lake. And, uh, but this place is always, always, always produces fish. But the only thing is, it's, uh, it's owned, the, uh, the land is owned by the water treatment facility. So, or by the, the state or the government owns it or something. Anyway, it's private land. You cannot get to this location by land. You have to... You can kayak, and in some of my videos I've kayaked to this secret spot, uh, which is not easy because it's not, like I said, it's about, it's almost like halfway between both of these harbors, and so it's not super easy to kayak that far. Um, but you can get there by boat. And so what, uh, what we did is we headed over there, we got as close as we could. Now you'll see in the video, 
I think you might be able to see, depending on how which direction I'm standing, and I think you'll probably be able to see, I'll, I'll probably put a screenshot in here, uh, or roll some footage or something so that you can see it in the background. Um, but, but, you know, with a boat, you can't get super close, but you can get close enough to where there's a lot of fish around there. So we were trying, you know, uh, silver spoons, which are usually dynamite for white bass. And uh, because of the high pressure, they weren't chasing lures. They, you know, they wasn't the kind of day where you're out there just casting and slamming them. So I, I, I casted quite a bit. I casted, we trolled a little bit, but when we got here, I did cast, you know, in every maybe hour or two, I would, you know, cast for maybe five minutes or so. Pull in one of my poles and cast for five minutes or so just to see if they were going to bite that way today. And they weren't. So what happened is I finally ended up just going bait fishing totally. I just, uh, I just said, okay, I'm just going to throw the buffet on. And a lot of times I will do the, uh, the buffet on one and then a jig head on the other. But we weren't drifting. We anchored up. We just anchored up and we stayed there. So I wanted to have as much bait in the water as I could. So in Utah, you can have three hooks on your line. And so both of my poles had the buffet. And so also, one of the things that was fun is that we, had, we caught two really nice cats. One very good sized cat, big boy. Um, and a ton of little white bass. I mean, you know, for, for the barometric pressure being high, which means the bite is definitely going to be tough. We had just an awesome, awesome day, and I am so excited to get back out there with, uh, with these folks again on a day with low barometric pressure <laughs> where we're going to catch, you know, you've seen my videos, 100, 200, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. But, uh, but anyways, I just wanted to make this video to show you two things most important in this video, and that is number one, my secret spot. If you're ever at Utah Lake, and it's a tough bite and you have a boat, you're in a boat and you're mobile, or if you check the pressure before you leave for your fishing trip and you've gotten access to a kayak, it's a lot of work, you know, to get there with a kayak, but it can be done. Um, that's the important part is it definitely can be done. You can get there. But it was an absolutely beautiful day. You know, we caught quite a few fish um, and just had a blast. And so that's how we got them, raw chicken breast, white bass, fresh white bass, you, as soon as you catch your first white bass, you cut it up in one inch squares, and then you start using that in the buffet system. And, you know, try a worm too for, you know, until, until, you, until it becomes clear, because you'll see which hook, you know, when you pull out your fish, you'll see which hook it's on. And so, you want to always, uh, you know, pay attention to the first couple fish that you catch, and if none of them have hit a worm, if it's been chicken and then white bass and chicken and white bass and those ones are, you know, back and forth, and the worm is just kicking it by itself, then you know that a worm today is not going to work. But I've had days where worms are the ticket, you know what I mean? So just fishing is that way that, you, you know, you're kind of learning what the fish want at that time. And so just a super, super fun day, great, great time on the water. And use these tips and get out there and catch yourself a ton of fish.
That's why I thought you could just tell you guys it's been nice long. It's so cool.
Alright guys, Josh Pedoski, PedoskiConference.com, check this out, this is on the buffet, look at some of my other videos, and this video will have it as well, there's three hooks, each has a different day on it, or you can find out what place they're hitting, and this one was white bass and chicken, but we got three fish in one shot, oh yeah, PedoskiConference.com, check it out, alright, Josh Pedoski, PedoskiConference.com, the bite is starting to pick up, we're starting to get them now, well, the white bass is about to slap me in my face, Oh yeah, look at this white bass, guys. This is probably, oh, got another one right here. Nailed it. Craig's on. White bass. Nice, they're biting. Okay, guys, here we go. Craig's in the back, he's got another one. Let's see if I can get you in the background and catch him. Let's see that. There he is. Craig's catching one in the background, just caught this tank white bass. I'm actually gonna measure him. He's one of the biggest ones I've ever seen. So, boo yeah, BendoxyPowerFishing.com, check us out. Here's bigger than mine? I think so. Oh, wow, look at this one Craig just brought in. Oh my gosh, I think it might be. <laughs> about the same thing. Jeez. Look at those tanks. Those are a couple of big white bass. Look at this one through the ice. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Catfish right there.